12 News continues to be your election headquarters. Nearly 24 hours after the polls closed in Texas, we continue working through the results. Team coverage for you tonight. Our reporters spread out across southeast Texas. Meanwhile, across the country, we are watching and waiting as a handful of states are continuing to count ballots. The race for president still too close to call. Demonstrators filling the streets calling for legal ballots to be counted. Now, the road to 270 is tightening right now with new states being called every hour. Let's take a look at some of those battlegrounds. So former Vice President Joe Biden is now the projected winner of Michigan, Wisconsin and Arizona. Votes are still being counted in Michigan and Pennsylvania with the president Trump rather suing to stop the process over a lack of transparency. Pennsylvania is among states still up for grabs where officials are counting mail in and absentee ballots tonight. Folks, I'm back at the big board. We are tracking the electoral college count right now. 264 electors for uh, the former VP Joe Biden and 214 for Trump. So what's changed late today? Well, the AP calling Michigan for Biden. You can see he is up there, roughly 80,000 votes at this hour. You look out in Arizona, uh, AP once again has called this state with its 11 electors for VP, uh, former VP Biden. Nevada is still very close. The difference there, eight thousand votes at this hour. So what's happening in Texas? We've made a lot of what uh, what has happened there and how the votes went last night. So I want to quickly zoom in and look at our counties. Remember here in Jefferson County, Trump carried Jefferson County by roughly fifteen hundred votes, but uh, it was it was enough to keep the county red and only two uh, key Democrats won reelection here. And those included um, what the sheriff's race and also a state representative. 12 News investigator Lauren Hensley is with us tonight to talk about some of the trends that she's monitoring. Yeah, Jordan, I know this election is far from behind, but looking ahead, can Republicans keep Texas red? Some changes are coming that could impact the future of elections in the Lone Star State. A strong Republican showing for the 2020 election. We're often assumed to be a ruby red state. But still many political analysts say Texas is on the verge of going purple. I could see it getting more like Ohio. I don't see it becoming Vermont. The reason for the political shift, changing demographics, especially in major metro areas. Texas is, is getting more black and more brown and more young voters. It's just, a, it's just an absolute fact. Now Texas has more than 5 million eligible Latino voters, and the number of them showing up to the polls has grown since 2012. It's projected to continue to grow over the next few years. Now, the good thing for Republicans is, in Texas at least, Republicans do better with Hispanics than they do in other states, maybe Florida's an exception. Texas's population growth will be reflected in the next U.S. Census. And when that information comes out, the state is expected to gain at least two more congressional seats. And that means a new congressional map. It looks like Republicans held the House and they control the Texas Senate by a good margin. So what that means is Republicans in the House and Senate will be drawing those district lines. They will be drawing them to their favor. With these changes, analysts say Texas will be competitive, maybe not as ruby red as Republicans would like. The idea of turning Texas blue, if Democrats are to do that, is a very long-term project. Uh, party coalitions change, issues change. You know, into the future, who knows what that'll bring. But for the near term, Texas will be either red or purple. And this year, both parties, depending on getting people out to the polls, rural Texas showed up for President Trump in a big way, and so did the Rio Grande Valley. If Republicans want to keep that momentum, their candidates need to target those key areas of Texas. Lauren Hensley, 12 News. State Rep Dade Phelan announced today that he has the votes needed to become the next Speaker of the Texas House. It could amplify the Southeast Texas voice in Austin. His competitor, State Rep Trent Ashby, has said he's not backing down, though. The news comes after the GOP maintained its majority in the lower chamber. Phelan released a bipartisan list of 83 lawmakers that he says support him. Now, to win the gavel, a candidate needs the majority of the 150 members' votes. That vote happens in January. It was a big night for Southeast Texas schools. Hart and Jefferson ISD passed both of their bond proposals last night. More than $25 million will go towards school improvements and athletic facilities. 12 News reporter Amelia White spoke with school administrators about their big plans for the community investment. 
elated and overwhelmed. Those were the two words Hardin Jefferson's communications director says she felt after the vote of confidence from the community to improve facilities for students. I woke up this morning. I'm feeling like a kid on Christmas morning. Thanks to two big wins for bond proposals that were on the ballot in Tuesday's election. Fortenberry says the last three years have been an uphill battle for the district. Um, in 2017, you know, we were very affected by Harvey, just like a lot of people in our area. The historic storm led to lost jobs, displaced residents, and damaged schools. And we lost um, our one of our campuses. Henderson Middle School um, had quite a bit of water in it for several days. Just one week before the never ending rain barreled down on Southeast Texas, Fortenberry says the district had just wrapped up projects to improve the middle school campus thanks to 2016 bonds. While students learned in portable buildings, officials came together to devise a plan for this year's bond proposal. We really started talking about what our community would support, what our community needs. We thought about growth. We thought, we, we thought about the quality of the building, how, how many years the building would last. To prevent future flooding, all structures will be elevated two feet above base flood elevation. This summer, we will start uh, construction. We've already demolished the old Henderson Middle School. That puts us a little bit ahead in, in, in the game. Henderson Middle School will open its doors in August of 2023. After speaking with Fortenberry today, she says they could not be the community that they are without the ever loyal Hawks. In Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. And it seems like everybody it was just anxious. It's just a big anxious feeling, man. We want to see what's going on. Uh, just want to see the country going the right way. Whoever is the best leader, we, we, we'll stand behind them. I'm a little nervous, I guess, because um, I'm scared of what, what's his name, Bennon might really do to us. I, I, don't, I don't trust him. All right, some Southeast Texans, like many across the country, are still processing election day anxiety. Not knowing the outcome of the presidential election has been tough for some of you, and we get it. Between the lack of sleep and the wait for a clear winner, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Kelsey Johnson joins us now with the do's and don'ts as we cope post-election. We're all feeling some kind of way this election, whether it's excitement or anxious, some feelings more intense than others, but it's how you cope with them that's important. It's on all major news outlets. It ain't over till every vote is counted. Every ballot is counted. This is a fraud on the American public. The results for the presidential election still TBD, and that's causing stress in many Americans. It's anxiety producing. I'm definitely nervous. I have insomnia, never had it in my life. But Rita Drake, a licensed counselor at Spindletop Center, has some advice that may alleviate some of those intense feelings. Anxiety about the election is real. That means you're concerned about our country. She says when you start feeling too anxious or upset, unplug for a while. Go outside, eat healthy, read a favorite book, do something that makes you happy, or pray. Anxiety involves our thinking and our feeling, and in tune with that, how our body responds. But there are also things you need to avoid. Don't turn to drugs or alcohol. To drown ourselves to where we can't think straight is just something that we need to stay away from. And if the candidate you're supporting doesn't win, don't turn to anger. Instead, Drake suggests looking for ways you can be a positive force in your community, perhaps getting more involved politically. We live in America. That makes me hopeful, no matter who the president is. But I think many of us can be happy about this. No more political ads or those political phone calls. Drake says if you are having overpowering anxiety, it could be more than just this election. It could be another stressor from the growing pile from the pandemic, financial stresses, or the two recent hurricanes. Live in Beaumont, Kelsey Johnson, 12 News. It has been a year. 12 News is your election headquarters, and we want you to keep it here on KBMT ABC. Join us at 9 o'clock tonight, an ABC primetime special, Your Voice, Your Vote, Election 2020. ABC will have live team coverage as we track the latest developments including those races that are still, at least those states, that are still too close to call.